A gracious good day to one and all once again. Tis I, North and the First by grace of God, Emperor of the United States and Protector of Mexico. Back with you once again for episode 77 of Emperor Norton's fantastic history vlog. Today is June 23rd, 2020. It is our 98th day, we're changing the wording on this a little bit, because we're no longer under a mandatory shelter in place order, so we're simply going to refer to it as COVID-19 restrictions. So it is our 98th day under COVID-19 restrictions here in San Francisco. Well, let's begin with our national days, as we always do. Today is National Typewriter Day. Who remembers typewriters, anyone? Hmm. National Hissing Day. Oh, it's for cats. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. It's National Kissing Day, but only in the UK. Uh, let's get on with our San Francisco story, as we so often do on this vlog. We rely on John Ralston's wonderful book, This Date in San Francisco. It goes on June 23rd, 1924, that Robert, uh, sorry, Russell L. Mon lands at Chrissy Field after the first dawn to dusk New York San Francisco flight. Russell Mon was born in Logan, Utah in 1893 and graduated from Utah State Agricultural College in 1917. He enlisted in the Army as the United States entered World War I. He shot down four enemy aircraft as an Army Air Service pilot in France. After war, he was in an Air Service test pilot and flew in air shows. In 1922, Mom, I'm sorry, it's Mom, not Mon. Wait a minute, I'm seeing both. Well, anyway, I believe it's Mon. Hmm. Set an unofficial speed record of 248 miles per hour in a Curtis R6 biplane. Air Service Assistant General William Mitchell had sponsored long distance flights as one way of getting support for a separate aviation branch of the service. He selected Mon as a pilot in 1923. Mon tried twice to fly from New York State to San Francisco, but failed due to mechanical problems. Mon made his third attempt on June 23, 1924. At 3.58 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, he took off from Mitchell Field, Long Island, in a Curtis PW-8 Pursuit fighter, placed with its armament removed and an additional 100-gallon fuel tank installed. As bulletins of Mon's progress reached San Francisco, crowds estimated over 40,000 poured onto and around Chrissy Field. Vantage points said that, uh, I'm sorry, Vantage points, yeah, sorry, said the Chronicle were black with humanity. Thousands of cars lined the field and the roads along the cliffs above. A su light summer fog drifted in. Searchlights to guide roads along the cliffs above. I'm sorry, I got lost again. Mon's landing were tested. Searchlights to guide Mon's landing were tested. There we go. Mon crossed the California state line near Truckee at 8.30 p.m. Pacific time. At 9 p.m. he was over Sacramento. At 9.26 he was seen over Vacaville. At 9.35 he was descending above Mare Island. At 9.45 the drone of his engines was heard at Chrissy Field. He's coming! When the Curtis flashed through the searchlight beam, crowds cheered and sirens wailed. Mon circled the field and, dis field and descended to the northeast corner. His wheels touched the dirt and the Curtis slowed to a stop. Well, I had a wonderful time, he said as he exited the plane. Well, let's get on with our other events today. It was on this date in 1819 that the first editions of the sketchbook of Jeffrey Crayon Gent by Washington Irving were released, featuring the story Rip Van Winkle. 1888, Frederick Douglass is the first African-American nominated for U.S. President at the Republican Convention that year. 1900, the Young Turks present a manifesto to the major foreign embassies in Constantinople, demanding that these foreign powers end the Ottoman Sultan's rule. That's where we get the term the Young Turks from. 1940, after conquering France, Adolf Hitler visits Paris and views the Eiffel Tower and the grave of Napoleon Bonaparte. 1956, transfusion by Nervous Norvis peaks at number eight. 1960, the first contraceptive pill 
is made available for purchase in the U.S. My, how that changed things, didn't it? 1970, The Red Skelton Show last airs on CBS when it moves to uh, next year on NBC TV. Good night and may God bless. Uh, 1972, President Nixon and his Chief of Staff H.R. Halderman agree to use the CIA to cover up Watergate. The revelation of that is what brought down Nixon's presidency. 1980, The David Letterman Show debuts on NBC TV Daytime. Most people don't know about his daytime show. It didn't last very long. And then, of course, he moved on to late night and then to CBS. Uh, 1993, Lorena Gallo Bobbitt amputates husband John Wayne Bobbitt's um, member. It's a family show. Well, let's get on to our births today. 1894, King Edward VIII, the father of Queen Elizabeth II. 1894, a sexologist Alfred Kinsey, his book changed the way a lot of people in the U.S. think about sex books, actually. 1912, uh, Alan Turing, the great hero of World War II, who broke the Enigma machine, more or less invented the computer. 1927, choreographer, film director, dancer, Bob Fosse. 1929, June Carter Cash, of course, the wife of Johnny Cash, but from the musical dynasty, the uh, Carter family of Elvis. 1940, Stuart Sutcliffe, uh, some would call him the fifth Beatle. There have been many. He was the Beatles bass player uh, before they made it famous. Uh, and 1957, Francis McDormand, of course, in Fargo, uh, great, great film star. Deaths today, year 79, Vespian, I'm sorry, Vespasian, Roman Emperor. Oh, we miss him. Now, 1865, Samuel Francis DuPont, an American rear admiral in the Union Navy, dies at 61. Now, maybe the name's familiar if, you're, if you have a, some knowledge of San Francisco history. Grant Avenue was called DuPont, and it was named after him because he was the captain of the Portsmouth that brought John Montgomery to San Francisco when he raised the American flag over Portsmouth Square. And uh, that's how DuPont's people got its name. Well, moving on. 1976, photographer Imogen Cunningham, a dark age of 93, the long career she had. 1995, Jonas Salk, the inventor of the polio vaccine. 1997, Betty Shabazz, American educator and civil rights activist. She was the widow of Malcolm X. Uh, I believe I can, oh, those are our guests, yeah, I'm still there, okay, 1998, pardon me, Maureen O'Sullivan, it's early, 2006, uh, producer Aaron Spelling, also 2006, Harriet, the Galapagos tortoise, was born in 1830, died at the age of 176 years old, 2009, Ed McMahon, yes, uh, sidekick to Johnny Carson in the Tonight Show, that is correct, sir. Uh, 2011, uh, Peter Falk, and 2015, Dick Patton. Uh, I believe his series was Eight Is Enough. I don't know, I never watched it. Well, anyway, uh, that wraps it up for this day's edition. Until we see you again, stay safe, stay inside, stay healthy. You can go outside, but if you do, wear a mask. It's such a small thing to do to protect both yourself and others. It's the best way to flatten the curve. Remember that. Uh, don't tra take unproven cures. Learn to drink water with one hand. And until we see you again, be kind to one another. Had a gracious week.